I wanted to find a book that really affected my life and my career. And it, it, it's a book that uh, has, um, it was written in 2006 by a gentleman that I met, actually, Tom Kligerman reminded me in Morocco, in Marrakesh, uh, years ago with one of the design groups we go to there with. Tahir Shah is uh, of Afghan origin. Um, he and his Indian-born wife have moved to London, uh, had children, and they decided they didn't like the cold weather and they wanted to change. So uh, his family uh, had originally been to Morocco many times in the mountains, loved it, uh, enjoyed, enjoyed the life there. Tahir Shah thought maybe I should go there and get uh, study, uh, see, see what house I could do myself there. He found one, um, it's actually in Casablanca, it's called the Caliph's house. The Khalifa is a Islamic term meaning um, son, pro, son of the Prophet. So it was a, a religious leader that had a huge house in Casablanca. It had been abandoned for many, many, many years. Um, and uh, I read it, I think Jean Meyer, my partner here, and I read it probably in 2006 or seven when, when it first came out. But, so, but it's funny because this is kind of the sequel to another book that I'm sure all of you remember, which is A Year in Provence. And so it's this kind of genre that uh, subliminally uh, uh, inspired me and affected me uh, to the point where, wow, what if uh, we should do that? At the same time, Jean and I have been going to Morocco for many years, since 2001, and as one does in a foreign country, I suppose all of you, many of you do, you look at real estate, and you talk about real estate constantly, which is what we do. Uh, and so we started putting bids on houses. We probably looked at 30 to 40 houses, um, we eventually ended up uh, getting a house, but coming back to Tahir Shah's book, um, hold on, uh, The Caliph's House, that's his other cover, which shows the Zalij. So just to show everybody, this is, you, you have no idea how many questions I get. Where is Tangier? Where is Casablanca? Where is Marrakesh? So just to put everybody in, understand, this is uh, Morocco, northwest corner of Africa. Um, Casablanca is the capital city. Um, the Marrakesh is somewhat inland toward the Sahara Desert, shown there in Algeria on your right. Uh, Tangier is on the Straits of Gibraltar, and above that is Spain. So that gives you a geographical sense of where you are. Um, and and it's, uh, some of the quotes I really like uh, to, to hear his books, which are uh, uh, quite inspirational. The Backstreet Cafe in Casablanca was for me a place of my story a place with soul, a place with danger. There was a sense that the safety net had been cut away, that each citizen walked upon the high wire of this, the real world. I long not to merely travel through it, but to live in such a city. And, and w with that, you get a sense of um, how inspiring uh, Northwest Africa was for Tahir and his family. So they ended up buying a house called Dar Khalifa, which was a, a real ruin. And if you Google it on um, YouTube, you can see it. Um, the pictures, it's quite, it was quite abandoned. Um, the, the book, by the way, here, is, um, has no pictures, so it was, uh, it, I had to imagine. Luckily, he's, he likes being on YouTube and performing, so you, you'll have to see him do that. It's quite interesting. So he has lots of gardens, huge house. This is a typical Riyadh, Riyadh meaning a house where the, the house is built around a courtyard. Um, with fountains, it's all about it's all about inward looking and and um, water and plant life, uh, a very private. Strangely, on the outskirts of his house, uh, there's a huge a bidonville, which is a slum, and on other sides, it's uh, high rises. So, this is some of this is its after work. You, the, he did a lot of work, trust me. Uh, here's the the workers putting together the tiles. These are these are actually illustrations from the book. There he is with his wife. Once they finally uh, bought the house, uh, spent two years renovating, they had a lot of issues with, strangely, with ghosts. The Moroccans are very superstitious, and there are many, many chapters in the book about the jinns, which are the ghosts that inhabit the house. And in order to ex exorcise them, he had to have ritual sacrifices and a lot of craziness. You, they, they, the, or, the ordinary person building a house here doesn't have to deal with. We, we had our own issues, which I'll tell you about. Luckily, no, luckily no gins, well, that type of gin, uh, didn't, didn't happen with us. But you can see this is his, his courtyard. I mean, beautiful tile work, amazing architecture, 
wonderful, wonderful use of materials. Uh, so that, that was his story, but what was my story? And, and I want to talk to you about how we were seduced by Northwest Africa, the culture, the people, the food, the climate especially, especially in daylight today. Um, it, it's, it's just heaven. So we ended up, Gina and I ended up going to Tangier a lot. My um, assistant, when I was at Peter Marino, uh, family is from Tangier, so this is her parents' house. It's Spanish colonial in style, built about 1900. Um, stucco walls, uh, ceramic tile roofs uh, up on the mountain. And you can see the influence of the, the colonial uh, kind of style had on, on the, the area. Mixed, and then you'll see mixed in with the, the Moroccan vernacular as well. Here's a lot of tiles in the pool. This is the guest house. Just, I mean, just heaven, just gorgeous, gorgeous style. Amazing things. Here's the view. So you can see across the, the straits there. That's not Spain, that's Gibraltar. Uh, that's um, uh, the other side of, of Tangier. But the city's right there on the right. When Jean and I first started going in 2001, I, there were probably three or 400,000 people in the city. Now there are over a million. Uh, a lot of people have moved up from Sub-Saharan Africa through the, through the, um, in the hopes of getting to Europe, and they're seduced like we are by Tangier, and they end up staying. So there's a huge building boom at the moment, which is, uh, uh, which we're actually doing some projects there now. Uh, this, Gina and I were very lucky to stay um, for four years in Yves Saint Laurent's house, which friends of ours rented. So this is a wonderful, wonderful place, uh, Villa Mabruca, which is in all the books. Jacques Grange did this. It's a wonderful place. There's me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is great. This is the salon. The gardens are spectacular. The weather there is amazing. It gets cold in the winter, but uh, it's just wonderful. Across there you can see Spain a little bit in the middle, between the trees. Yeah, there, there's Spain in the distance. It's quite spectacular. You can see that where, where it's, it's really east meets west. So here's, this is a view of, uh, from the air that I took. This is the Bay of Tangier. This, these are the, um, the big ports which the king has decided to take out of town and move to the north. So they're, they're renovating it. It's going to become a big city, uh, even bigger than Marrakesh, I think, because of its geographic location. Uh, so when, when we're looking at a place, uh, when we were seduced by the town, we were walking around the actual city. We decided we wanted something that was kind of... Uh, 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 more in the Moroccan vernacular than, than the colonialness that's happening up on the mountain. Uh, so I'll give you a, a sense of what's happening there. It's hard to know the, the date of these things. Some things are brand new, and some things are, could be 18th and 19th century. Great color, great Zalish work. This is tile. You can see the influence of classicism there with the, the tile work, and this is the Dar Kasbah Museum. So here's the new gate that they, they, they just restored out, outside, of, uh, outside of our house. There's a lot of money going in there now, which is uh, great for us and great for the Moroccans because it means better roads, better airports. They're going to have a high-speed train. Um, this is the road down to our house. <clears throat> We've been looking for a house, as I say, for probably four or five years. Um, and this is the main street leading down from the Kasbah into the Medina. And you can see the great use of color. I think that, oh, that's me there. <laughs> Uh, here's our street walking down. An interesting story, this, this street is now paved because Barbara Hutton in the 40s decided she wanted to drive a Rolls Royce down, so they took all the stairs out and made it into a, a pathway all the way down. Her house is next to ours, or her garage is next to ours. So this is our friend's house. Um, the, the house to the right is the house of Barbara Hutton's, uh, Sidi Khosni. Uh, it's a huge palace, it's actually for sale if anyone's interested. It's an amazing house. I mean, spectacular. This is what, I mean, this is, amazing. This is a, a great house. Our friends Bruno and Hervé restored this three years ago. Uh, took them three years. Everything in Morocco is quite slow. It takes a long time to work with the, the engineers, the contractors, the architects, the local people that do all the, all the work. So here we come to our house. So this is, our house is the little one up there, the two-story job on the, in the middle of the picture. Uh, to the left of it is Barbara Hutton's garage. This is called the Place Amra. And um, you can see the kind of condition when we bought it. Looks like it's freshly painted and that's about it. But I will, yeah, so what's interesting, this is a painting by Sir John Lavery. 
And we did some research, Jean found this actually, and it's, uh, this is our house right there. So this was painted, when was this? 1870, 1890 maybe. Um, so there's our house there. So it's quite a famous, a famous little, little spot. Hasn't changed too much. Uh, and then and here's our house again in 1900. We found this photograph when we were doing some research. Um, you can see the little arch, the second arch on the right, that's our house. And they obviously had a, a, a fence up there where they kept animals or something. So that was kind of exciting. It, here you can see the, the, the way it was before Barbara Hutton took the, um, the steps down and made into a street. So the, the steps there uh, were made into flattened. So here's the inside of our house when we, when we first bought it. So just to show you the, the, what the pretty typical city life house there is like. This was two and a half stories. Um, the door, lots, a few original elements which we kept. Staircase was not to code, as you can see. We just <laughs> we decided to change that. Yeah. Um, so this is interesting. Moroccans all longed to sell their ruined ancestral home for vast profit, and move to a prefab apartment block in the new town. We may yearn for rustic detail and old world charm, but those who have it set their minds on vinyl wallpaper, fitted carpets, and all modern conveniences. And that's actually true. You you. Uh, you read about people selling their, their family home, uh, and it, it, this is, this, they decide to move into a high rise, and that's why a lot of things are being torn down. So we're involved with the historic preservation of the community, trying to keep things um, and, and restore them back to the way they were. But we don't have, there's not a lot of local support, actually. Supposedly, well, the, actually the king is supporting it, but the, um, the average person really has their high hopes set on a modern uh, building in the, in the suburbs. Uh, more pictures of our house. Pretty scary. Yeah, very scary. Yeah, huh? That was, <laughs> this is our kitchen. The kitchen when we first bought it. That's our next door neighbor. A restored house. His was the kitchen here. So that was, uh, yeah, we had a little work to do there. A little scary. Maybe it was the laundry. Maybe it's on the kitchen. I can't tell. But so this is interesting. This is the these are the plans when we first bought the house. You can see it's a two and a half story structure, typical for the Medina where we were. Um, we were lucky because it's one of the only places that has a garage. So that's one of the big reasons why we purchased it. So we we put together plans. My team in in New York uh, made lots of uh, designs. We built, we, we started building, we had great, uh, per, we had permission from the CAI, the local authorities, to build. Everything was perfect uh, until uh, our ghost appeared. And they came in the form of the neighbors. So the neighbors uh, had everyone sign a petition all around town saying that we were the New Yorkers coming in to destroy the flavor of the Kasbah. So this says Tangier, the, the, the battle starts with the residents. Um, and that's our house. Of course, they took a house which made our house look ridiculously big and, and out of place, when in fact, this is lower than everybody else. So they were just um, nasty and jealous. So after many articles in the newspaper and the social media, um, another one, the, anar the urban anarchy knows no respite in the Medina. So <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, it was pretty awful, especially to get phone calls when you're in New York. Phone calls in the middle of the night saying, you know, the, the, the townspeople are upset. They signed a petition. They want to tear your house down. Yeah. Whatever. You know, it, it, you, could just, you, just, you just have to deal with it. This is, this is life in exotic land, building, building your dream home. So eventually, after lots of um, legal maneuvering, we convinced the authorities that, yes, we did have permission to build what we were building and they relented and, and everything came back to normal. So that's all good. So we continue with the building and uh, it's, it's coming along. This has been three years now. So you can see, uh, we, didn't, it, we, we didn't change too much, we just cleaned it up. And this is the, the annoying part, which you'll all see that everywhere there are uh, um, electrical lines and telephone lines, so they, they haven't buried them yet. It's typical. Here's the interiors. 
So this is a view from our terrace looking towards the Port of Tangier. It's pretty magical, as you can tell. It's just beautiful. Um, again, Terrier Shaw. Being helpful is a game that everyone in Morocco is forced into by their family and friends. Moroccans see it as their duty to help those that are close to, they are close to. Not being of assistance at all times can bring dishonor and disgrace in the family. And we found that to be true. And it's actually, it's actually a comfort uh, if you know how to, how to work it. Everyone we were working with, all the, all the, the vendors, all the artisans, all the contractors, they all want, want to be helpful. And that continues to, to this day with our projects there as well. Everyone's super nice and, um, and very friendly, and, and they, 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 they really want you to succeed. That was a nice part of it. Here's just more building. We, we changed the arches. That's my contractor with the red shirt. That's my owner's rep. And this is the, you know, in, in the West, we, we use owner's reps all the time as the person between the owner and the, um, the contractor. And in this case, it's quite, he's quite useful because Jerome, our, con our owner's rep, lives next door. He's always seeing our project. He speaks French, he is French. He can speak to the contractors and all this, and a bit of Arabic. He speaks to the, 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 the vendors, the tile layers, the brick layers. Um, and it's, it's helped us a lot. I don't think we could have done this project without our owner's rep, which is, which is a good thing. Uh, lots of uh, showing up. This is our new staircase. So this is contrasted with our, with our other staircase that you saw, which wouldn't have worked. We have a lot of older friends there. <laughs> um, so here's how, our, here's how our house came about. We changed, I don't have a pointer, but you can see the top. The top where the fireplace is, that's where the original entry was. And we moved the entry over to the side, so you now have a nice uh, a, a appropriate entry further away from the street. Um, ceiling height here is four, or five, four and a half meters, so it's almost 16 feet on the ground floor, which is great. And then we have space for the guardian. The, the guardian is the guy that li will live there when we're not there um, and watches over the house. So here you can see, maybe not fit, maybe 14 feet. Um, but what was interesting, in order to get light down from the sky, down to the top, down to the ground floor, we created these, this atrium. So in, in Morocco and Marrakesh especially, you've heard of Riyadh. Riyadh, like Tahir Shah had, it, it's, a, it's a house that has a courtyard in the center. In Tangier, we don't have Riyadh. We have a simple dar, which is a house. We needed light down to the bottom, so we created this atrium here, added beams and plaster. There we are, which was interesting. I didn't want a plain atrium going all the way down, so we decided to create this cage of Musharabiyah. Musharabi is, um, is, a, is a carved wooden um, screen used for privacy. It creates, it, it lets air flow through. You can see out, but people can't see in. So this was ideal for us. Interestingly enough, um, just because you're a lot of your architects and designers, you'll, you'll appreciate that in Morocco, the opposite uh, for expenses are true. Plaster is very, very cheap, and wood is very expensive. They just don't have the wood but the plaster workers are incredible. So here's the atrium here, looking up three floors. Uh, and instead of just a plain atrium in stucco, we made it into, you can see it there, into wood. That's a great picture, I love that. It's looking better. So the center of the atrium is wood, the exterior is all plaster. Here's some traditional arches. Uh, this, is, this is a great, um, Balustrade, an idea that I got in, um, in Old Fort in um, Nassau, Bahamas, so I copied that. They, the, the artisans there can do anything you want, and the prices are very reasonable, and they, they love being pushed to design and, and, and work out of their comfort zone into different things. This is typically not a, Moroccan design is kind of, it's a bit more Spanish colonial, so we came up with that, and that's kind of your balustrade. This is our plan for the flooring. Um, you can see we use a lot of different tiles, mostly cement tiles, but we also did um, uh, glaze, un glaze and unglazed ceramic tiles. This is going to be our floor, uh, again from Tahrir. In Morocco, artisans are almost never seen working with an electric saw, a drill, a polisher, anything else with a power cable. They rely on their ability alone. The end result may have had a lack of uniformity, but there was a sense that it was quite unique, and you really see this. And it's so exciting. Gina and I will go to Tangier maybe twice a year, um, and every time we're there, the, the guys are so happy to see us and, and work with us and, and the things that we can do. Here's a, 
little things we'll sketch on paper, they'll just whip out in plaster in no time. And it's just, it, it's really quite amazing. Just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant plaster work. Here they're coming through. We've added a lot of um, uh, air grills there just to give more ventilation throughout the house. This is interesting. Anybody know what this is? Gypsum, exactly. So this is, there we go, Mr. Plaster. So this is what we use to paint the house, the exterior. So we mix that, I guess, with water? I think so. Um, they will, and they'll paint the house with it. And it, it creates a kind of barrier against insects, against mold. It's, it's quite interesting. It's, a, it's funny to buy your paint like this, but uh, that's what one does. We have regular paint too. So this is looking up in the other atrium, up toward the um, a skylight. Uh, does anybody know what those are called in the corners? This is a new word I learned. Squinches? Mm -hmm. New word, I didn't know that. So these are, these are I guess, blocks of um, plaster, which we saw uh, in several places in India and in uh, Morocco, and I thought it was interesting. So we added them to our house. That's looking up towards the, the skylight. Here's Jean coming up the stairs. Rest or bathroom in the guest bath. Again, we added lots of plaster work and lots of um, grills throughout for ventilation. This is interesting. This is a, a d door design we found in um, uh, uh, Longview Gardens in New Orleans, and I copied the door, which was great. The tiles I got in Italy, they're Sicilian from the late 19th century. Uh, again, tile work. The woodwork there is great, but mostly they work in cedar which is what they have in the High Atlas Mountains. So most of the, almost all the woodwork you'll see is cedar. Here's a guy building our arch, interesting to see. More um, rosettes for the ceiling. Here's the second floor plan. So this was, this was kind of fun, and, and I could never probably do this for a client, but I said, you know, why don't we do a fun oval bathroom? So you can see the bathroom on the left-hand side. It just kind of appeared that that form would work, and it turned out great. The square there next to the oval is the atrium that goes all the way through. So that's the, that's the atrium going down before we covered it. There's the atrium there, now being covered with um, Musharabi. That shows the, that's a section showing the atrium down, down cut through. Here it, is, whoop, here it is, finalized with the Musharabi. Here it is here, let's look into the bathroom. It turned out, it's turning out great. There is more. Yeah. Bathroom here, ceiling. Here's Jean, we created a little niche. Uh, and we completed it with tile work, which was quite fun, and a copper bath that we found at the flea market in Paris, which was exciting, I hope it works. Yeah, it doesn't leak. Uh, this is interesting, this is called bejmat. This is, um, that's the Arabic word for unglazed tile. Um, they use it a lot, especially in Marrakesh, Marrakesh, less so outside in Tarangir, but we thought it was a great outdoor surface. That's one of the terraces, and here's the finished product. I mean, this is brand new. This does not look brand new, so. This is late, uh, recently installed. Here's the top floor where we created a salon and the kitchen. Because uh, the houses are built so close together, it tends to be dark on the ground floor, so uh, everything's brought upstairs. Life is lived upstairs and on the roof, and because you have better the prevailing breeze from the Straits of Gibraltar, it's, uh, it's a much more agreeable place to live. So we have two terraces. Uh, here's the upstairs before it's, that's the way they build. Here's the guys doing the plaster. What's interesting is that, uh, unlike in America, um, well, definitely unlike in America, uh, the projects we do here, the team will actually live in your house. So it's all scheduled in, in groups, like these are the plaster guys. So they lived at our house for about six to eight months, <laughs> at least, at least. And this is, they, they live and they sleep and they, you know, cook there while they're doing this. And um, it's just what they do. And then they leave, and the woodworkers come and they live in your house. So everybody's living in your house while it's being, it's being built, which is fair enough. So you can see that, which is nice, because they, they, they really take pride in their craft, which, which I, 
I like. Here's more of it. Here's Jerome looking at different panels of Musharrafi. I mean, you can imagine trying to get that here. It just wouldn't happen. Um, but this is their craft, their local craft, and, uh, and it turned out amazing. There you go. It's, it's nice, it provides privacy and light and air. Here's some of our drawings. Uh, in, we, we, it gets kind of cold there in the winter. Um, in his, also in Casablanca, where Tamir Shaw was, and he talked about in his book, um, you know, really chilly winters. It gets very, it's very humid, so it's kind of bone chilling. So in addition to floor heating, we also have radiators built into the wall. You see the radiators there before they were covered. That's Jean in the kitchen. We have a skylight. That's the terrace. There's Mohammed putting on the sill over the. Here's Isham and other people working. That's we're going to have a rooftop terrace. Look how blue the sky is. It's heaven. This is a staircase that Jean designed actually going up to the roof. To be made in wood. Here's our chimney. Our, uh, here's the roof. Um, we weren't allowed to build uh, a structure on that, so we just left it with the fencing. That's the skylight. Neighbors. Whoever you are, Morocco takes you in. Before you know it, you have a home and friends, and you've forgotten your troubles. And that's, that's really true. It's, just, it's the most forgiving culture. It's the people are so wonderful, so warm. It's all about being polite. Um, the Moroccans uh, really don't know the word no. Everything is a yes, which at first works, but then, <laughs> but then you ask them to do something, they say yes, and it doesn't get done. So you're constantly pushing, as opposed to say other countries like in France, where the first reaction is no. Um, you have to work to get to a yes. With Morocco, it's always a yes, and you have to make sure you don't get to the no. So they're, they're very friendly. Um, and it's just a, it's a fun place. Oh, there's me. This is, <laughs> Jean made me put this in. This is, uh, this is um, a huge uh, hat. Uh, the farmers made that. That's a farmer's hat from the sun. This was kind of cool. These were our shutters. And I wanted to have shutters that protected against the, um, the, uh, the noise of the street and the wind, but it could also open up a little peek a door for kind of privacy, which I thought was interesting. Uh, here's our floor. And this is interesting. This is um, my architect, Daniel, is just in Morocco now, um, working on a new project for us. Uh, and he is sending pictures. So this was just taken yesterday, because I knew I was going to have the talk with you guys today. And I wanted to show you where we are, actually, as of yesterday. Um, so they're laying, actually, actually the tile on the floor. These are cement tiles made locally. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a great resource. Um, and I know we use cement tiles here, but it was fun to go to the atelier, the factory, and actually see them um, making things. Here's our kitchen yesterday. The, uh, the, the, um, the marble stone is all reclaimed from houses that they've unfortunately torn down, which you can get there, uh, mixed with the colored tiles, which are called zilige. Um, Tahir Shah did lots of that and lots of uh, worked with lots of artisans like we did. Um, this is this is funny. This is the tile we bought in um, from Sicily and had shipped over. Don't ask me why, but I just thought it was beautiful. Um, I wanted something old there, uh, and this is probably late 19th century. We have like three rooms of this tile, which I thought was really pretty, really pretty. Uh, here's the going in the butler's pantry in the kitchen with a lot of work. So here's the living room. These are new colors that we're trying out, which is exciting. Jean shows a lot of these colors, which are great. Uh, As our first year in Morocco drew to a close, I found myself thinking a great deal about the move. The learning curve had been severe. I concluded that a life not filled with severe learning curves was no life at all. And I think this is from Thierry Shaw, but in actuality, this is, really, this is really our story. And I love the fact that I rediscovered, because of Peter Leiden's insistence upon doing this, this talk, I rediscovered uh, Tahir's book, uh, that this is really our story, that we decided to find a place where we could, 
do whatever artistic kind of creative fantasies we had. Uh, and and it, it, it's really turned out wonderful. And I know Tahir Shah has felt the same way. He, he, he really wants to push the envelope as to we, uh, aesthetically, artistically, creatively, and to be in a place that has such a high level of sophisticated development um, artistically is, is a wonderful place to be. And, and this, is, this has made it all worthwhile. So there you go. And that's my story. So, thank you. Thanks. Um, I think we're going to turn it over to questions and answers. So, if anybody has questions, I'm happy to happy to answer. Allison in the front row. Yes. It's a treat to see this. Thank you very much. Your beautiful house. The Sicilian tiles. Did you buy them? With an idea in mind of, of where they might go, is there a story? About yeah, that, that, them? yeah, good question. The um, the Sicilian tiles. There's a, there's a place I go. I've been going for years in Rome, called outside of Rome, called L'Antichità Fiorillo, that I discovered, um, and we've brought clients there. We've bought lots of antique chimney pieces. We've bought lots of tiles, uh, and it's it's like no other place in the world. You go there. It's an hour north of Rome. It's so interesting. There's such passion, there's such a history with each, each group of tiles. You're walking in the fields where they are, and you see a big group of tiles, you ask how much, how many meet, square meters you have. Gene and I just thought, why not? Well, why not take this and, and do it, uh, use it in a project? So I've used it in projects for my, my clients here in New York and, and out, out, out other places. But there were, there were three others that we really liked, and, and I just thought, wow, that's really interesting. The other thing I want to say is, which I didn't mention, is Tangier is a, is a, um, there are a lot of designers there, a lot of architects and designers, and it's a really hardcore uh, place where there's a lot of one-upmanship, a lot. And as you see in probably every single world of interiors, a house in Tangier, uh, everyone's doing their best work. And it's really exciting to be a part of that. Every house we go to, every cocktail party, every dinner, is a different thing, and it's just, it's, 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 it's a beautiful thing. Everybody shows, shows their best, and, and for us to have some, found something that was so unique um, was really exciting, so that, that's really the story with the tiles. And we'll continue, because we're always looking for, for new things. In Tangier, it's not like in a lot of places in the West where you want your house to look like everybody else's or like a hotel, it's not that at all. It's all about individuality and originality, and it's, it's, it's what makes the place really special. Anybody else? Yes? When you say the Medina, what is the Medina? Oh, sorry, so, the, so you, have the, you have the town in Morocco, and you have uh, many of which were planned by the French during the occupation, uh, or during the years of colonial rule. And so you have the cities, the new cities that are laid out in a kind of rectilinear grid like you have in Washington or Brasilia or places like that, even, pa even not Paris, but um, then the old part of the town is, is called the Medina, and that's traditionally where the markets are, where people live. We technically live in the Medina. The first couple of ha places that I showed you were the Kasba, the Kasba being the fortress up on the hill, it has a wall around it, traditionally it's older, um, the place where Tahir Shah lived in Casablanca. Casablanca, interestingly enough, was the first city planned from the air. So it's a new city built by the French. The French had airplanes. They flew over. They decided exactly how to plan the city. So Casablanca is very planned and very organized. It's an art deco city. Tangier is much older. Tangier was inhabited by the Phoenicians, the Romans, the Moors, the Spanish, everybody up until now. Um, so you've got lots of the higgledy-piggledy streets, the Medina being the, the main part of it. And, and I think that's why a lot of Moroccans want to leave the Medina, because it represents the past. They're looking towards the future, and that's why so many of them are moving to the outside of the, outside of the city zone in these huge high-rises that the, the new money is building. So for us, thank God, the king and others have renovated, are restoring and protecting the, um, the historical patrimony of the, of the local area in the Medina. So we're lucky to have things like that are, that are protected, just like our, our, um, our house was protected. And I hold no animosity toward our neighbors who were protecting the, the beauty of the Casbah. It, it, it's probably what I would have done as well had I not seen the plans. So I think they're probably happier with us now, I hope. 
that we haven't destroyed the c character and we've built a house that's in keeping with the rest of the classical area. Any more questions? Go ahead, Adrian. Were those neighbors um, indigenous Moroccan people or were they sort of expat French? They're expat French. Okay. Yeah. No, we actually have no problems whatsoever with the Moroccans. Zero. Zero. Yeah. Who else? Yes? Yeah, why did you choose Tangier and not Eswira or Kathakul or Marrakesh? Good question. Because, um, because our, our friends are there. And um, we, we just fell in with this, this group of, of primarily expats all over, from all over America, England, France, some Moroccans. Um, it's, sorry, Italian. Italians also, yeah, everybody. Um, it, it's a real melting pot. Hi, uh, you mentioned Hi. that you're doing work there now. Is that because you're a property owner that you're allowed to work there? Mm, good, good question. Not sure. Not sure. Um, no, I'm working there because we made some contacts and I met a lot of people, and they're interested in what I have to say and a, a different um, way of doing. You know, in a lot of the developed world, developers are doing the same thing over and over and over, and we see this in New York a lot. So it's happening all over the world. We really and 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 I think the developers are getting smart and they're thinking, you know what? I need a different product. I need to have something out there that's going to differentiate me from the other developers. New York developers, I know, are thinking the same way, and my Moroccan developers feel exactly the same. They so they see me as someone coming in with maybe a different viewpoint than the than the average person building a, a bland white box high rise. So I'm, I'm able, and it's funny because the work I'm doing in Morocco for the developers. I'm actually convincing the Moroccans to go back to the root of their, their patrimony and their design and say, you know, you guys are the country of carved tile, uh, carved plaster, and woodwork, and this and that, and, and your crafts. Let's use it. Let's celebrate it. I really I I want to be a part of that and not just do this bland kind of globalization that, that you see everywhere. So that, that, I'm very happy to promote that. Thank you so much.